And we saw how, on, on page 15, we're going back today, we saw how Samuel, I'm sorry, how David suffered for something that he did not even do. For someone that he never even liked. For someone that was not even his friend. He suffered simply because he took his office. He yes. took his position. Yes. That was the suffering. So, we saw last week that there are positions that we take and that covenant or curse or bondage is connected to the office. Yes. yes. We looked at certain offices, even the office of a spouse, an office as a wife, yes. office as a husband. I gave an example of somebody that had five wives and they all died of the same disease, mm -hmm. cancer. And was not the sixth one. And I looked at her, in my head I said, run baby run. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't say that. Yeah. There are certain things that a preacher cannot say. You are restricted on what, you can just say what you think. <laughs> but in my head, he told you his five wives died of cancer. Mm -hmm. Did you think like, okay? <laughs> Why? Yeah. Yeah. I told her, if you don't go through prayer, you develop cancer. Guess what she, she had then? She had cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she's still alive. Praise God. She's still alive. So there are offices like that that you get connected to. You take a job, the person that was there before you was fired or whatever, or maybe they got involved with um, infidelity. Mm -hmm. You take that position. You start feeling funny. And you start developing these thoughts about somebody else's wife or another, when you already have a spouse. That spirit that caused that man or that woman to fall sexually is connected to the office. Not to your goodness, not to how, how much you speak in tongues, it's connected to the office and you to cause you to fall if you don't take care of it. Yes. I was talking to, you know, a relative of mine on Facebook, so I want to mention, they will know that I'm talking about them, but... And here is what happened. Her father had a business. And that business thing made everything glass, like glasses, like bottles. They, they, it was a big business. The company, no, the, her partner messed, her, messed him up, like cheated him, went to court and won and just sabotaged him as a partner. Herself is going through the same thing that her father went through. Wow. Her brother, her brother is going through the same business where you, you are partners with someone and they just sabotage you, they bring accusation, they try to take you out of the business, they try to erase your name from the business. And I, I was explaining what we talked about in class, and she was quiet, and she said, that's something. I said, why? And I said, well, I'm going to do the same thing. <laughs> my partner wants to steal my business, and he, he has an upper hand on her because of some paperwork that he, he, he signed without her consent. Mm. And then he, she told me, you know that my brother is going through the same thing. They're in court right now. Now, what's a, what, you can call, you can say that it's, what's the word? Coincidence. You can say it's coincidence. There's no such thing. <laughs> you believe that. Mm -hmm. So, you see these things happening where whatever happened with your parents is somehow happening to you. Where there was bankruptcy, 
And Bankers now is slowly tracking its foot to you. We saw how even sometimes a house, you move into a house, the one that owned it, lived a certain way, and the same stuff come. That thing is not on you, it's connected to the land. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. So there are things that we Christians, we must be aware of. We talk about covenants. How we make this? We make these covenants. You are six years old and you you loving this girl. I love you. I cannot live without you. Mm -hmm. Four years later, they are ten years old and they realize that they cannot be with you. Those covenants that you made, even promises that we made to these people or females, you made them promises. You you the only one. I will die without you. Mm -hmm. People make those covenants. Yes, they do. Even though the extent of writing the names of uh, their spouses on their hearts. Because you are in love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now, your wife or your husband is looking at that name every morning. <laughs>
You are welcome in this place. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, we, your people, adore you. You are adoring him. You are singing songs to him. Yes. Yes. We give you this deliverance. Yes. We offer you this person. This is your child. This is your daughter. Yes. Come now in your power. Mm. Come now in your might. Mm. Come now and bring forces of darkness down. You said in your word that if you be lifted up, you draw all man to you. We lift you up. You said your name. You've been given a name that is above every other name. At the mention of the name Jesus, every knee bow, every time confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. What are you doing? You are bringing the Lordship of Jesus into the place. You are making a declaration that only one Lord exists yeah, yeah, in this room. Yeah, yeah. And his name is Jesus. Yeah. You are God Almighty. You are above all kingdoms. You are the king of the universe. There is no one like you. Amen. Holy Spirit, yeah. we bow. Holy Spirit, we yield. Holy Spirit, you are a great God. Yes. Come now. Just like you came in, in Exodus. You came as a mighty wind. You mm -hmm. caused the Red Sea to move and stand still. Mm -hmm. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Mm -hmm. Come and lift this person up from the, from the powers of darkness. You said you would translate, you translate from the darkness to light. Mm -hmm. Come now, Holy Ghost, we pray. Yes. You are. <clears throat> confess his word. Don't confess your mind. Don't confess all these things that you hear. Yeah. Confess what he has said in his word. Amen. So you are lifting him up. Because this time, you've done the uh, renouncements, you've done the repentance, you've, you've done the cleansing, we did that. Now, you are inviting the very one that Jesus said, if I, by the Spirit of God, cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Amen. Jesus himself said, if I, by the Spirit of God. Yes. Not by himself. He himself depended on the Holy Ghost. Yes. That is why we need to depend on the Holy One, the Holy Ghost. Paul says he is the spirit of holiness. You confess him. Hallelujah. Amen. You have scriptures there. Somebody read Matthew 12, 28. 28. 28. Matthew 12, 28. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God is coming. If I, what? First of all, the I must be acknowledged. The I must be lifted. Who is the I? The I is the I am that I am. The I is Jesus. The I must be acknowledged. And now the I say this. If I, Jesus, cast out demons, by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come into you. Amen. You acknowledge the I. Yes. It's not about processes. Seven ways of dealing with the demon. Forget all that. Five ways of keeping, 365 ways of keeping a demon out. Forget all that. Acknowledge the I. Acknowledge Jesus. Amen. That's it. Alright. Bringing demonic forces unto the Lordship. Exhorting Jesus. Confession forcefully. And here's you. You confess forcefully and you say, here's how you say it. Jesus, you are the Lord in the life of Diana. You are the king in the life of Diana. You are calling on him and you are confessing Jesus. Every demonic forces, every darkness must calm down, must collapse. Why? Because of your presence. You said, where, if, if, where, where there is your presence, there is liberty. You are, yes. you are forcefully confessing the name of Jesus in the life of an individual. 
Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. The third one is now it's you. It's not Jesus. It's you. You affirm the authority that you, you have. You, your authority, the authority that you have over demonic forces. All this stuff of, oh, you cannot cast out demons. Yeah, well, if you confess that, they will cast you out. They will torment you, they will slap you. They will bind you, they will, yeah, because you just said you cannot do it. And people believe that. Oh, because of what, what, what Zachariah said. You know, in Zachariah it says, the Lord, the Lord, what did he say? The Lord rebukes you. You are in the new covenant. Yes, yes we do. Jesus said, as my father sent me, so sent I you. Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes. You are not right. in the old covenant. You are right. a new Amen. covenant believer yes. with yes. authority, yes. the same authority that Jesus yes. carried, you carry it. Yes. Yes. And guess what? Even more. Amen. Because he right. said, greater right. things yes. shall you do yes. than this because yes. I go to the Father, Lord. I will yes. send the Holy Ghost. Yes. When I send the Holy Ghost, yes. he will speak yes. of me. Yes. He will do things that concern yes. Jesus. Yes. 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 And it's me. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people think, oh, it's you, you, are being, you, are, you are being an arrogant. No. No. Demon, listen, I am casting you out. Yes. 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 Amen. I have authority over you. Me. Yes. Yes. I have authority over you and I'm here to cast you out. Yes. Make your business known from the yes. beginning. Make your intentions known that you are here for business. Look, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a pastor and a evangel and a pastor Bob. Do you think every time I'm about to correct someone, a uh, uh, pastor Bob, uh, pastor Bob? No, that's why he hired me. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want you to do that. Stop doing that. If you keep doing that, you may say bye. I'm the one saying it, but of course, I am a person under authority. That's right. Mm -hmm. So when you're casting out demons, yes, you're doing it in the name of Jesus, but you stand, baby, say, I am the one casting you out. Yes. Know this. Yes. It's called knowing your position Amen. in Christ. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you this. Let's say ranks. What, where are you in rank in the kingdom of God? What number are you? Okay, let, let's, who's, who's been in the service? I mean, uh, soldiers, army, air force, whatever. There's one over there. Oh, nice oh yeah, over there. He has a uniform. <laughs> hey, Pastor, 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 what are you? What are you? Are you captain? Oh, you captain. What's under captain? First lieutenant. First lieutenant. What's above captain? Major. Major. All right, okay, so he just gave us an order. Major, Captain, First Lieutenant. What number are you in the kingdom? You're the general. Yes. What number? Give me a number. Uh, five, I don't know, ten. ten. You ten? Uh, top ten. That's right. Top ten. What number? Give me a number. What number are you? <laughs> Two. What number are you in the kingdom? Ten. One. 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 You can't be one. Four. <laughs> Anybody else? Thirteen. Ten. Thirteen. 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 Thirte
That's number one is what we really want. Who thinks they're number one? Yeah, yeah. I mean, number one. So we'll see. Yeah. Tell us yeah. teacher. Tell us teacher. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to now and see. Listen, let me say this. If you don't know that, the devil will slap you. Yeah. yeah. What? Okay, what? Go to Psalm 8. That, that was not even the noise. Psalm 8. Now, King James has messed the name up. King James has missed the real thing there. Psalm 8, verse 5. You have made him a little lower That's than what I said. Angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. Now, go to verse 6. It says that you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. And you have put all things under his feet. All things under his feet. Yeah. Yeah. Angels are things. Are, yeah. there, if, your, if your king James says angels, the right word there is Elohim. Yes. What is man that you are so mindful of that you've yes. made him a little lower than Elohim? So which yeah. means, in position wise, in the kingdom, you are number two. Number two. Okay. God is number one, yeah. you are number two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she got it right. <laughs> Not number four or number 13. Who says 13? Who says 13? Okay. You have made him a little lower than Elohim. Number two, God is not three. God is one. Yes. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is one God. After that, it's man. You've made him a little lower than Elohim, and you've given him authority over the works of your hands. The angels are the works of his hands. The mountains are the works of his hands. Everything, the food, they are the works of his hands. So, you know, when you know your position, you will function better. Amen. You know, um, in boarding school, there was some. The, when I was in boarding school, the, the people, the, the people that were a grade higher. They would try and make you that. Like I went, I was a tenth grader when I went to boarding school. Mm -hmm. So those that were eleventh grade mm -hmm. who tried to send you go do something for them, mm -hmm. yes. and it's boarding, so you just have to do it. Mm -hmm. So when I arrived, there was a ninth grader that took advantage of that and said, "Hey, they call they called you G10, tenth grade. Hey, G10, come in." So I thought he was a grade higher than. So I went, oh, oh, give me this. Oh, not this uh, no. <laughs> Got it done. Now, ninth, eighth, and ninth grade was downstairs. So the, the way you made the difference is people that went upstairs, you know, they're 10, and 11, and 12. So I see that guy going down. I'm like, man, he sent me to get something out. Yeah. Get him. <laughs> you know why, why he succeeded in sending me? I mean, because you did. I did not know. So if you don't know who you are, you don't know your position, mm -hmm. things will climb on you, yes. diseases will climb on you, okay. and you don't know that you have power to yes. tell these yes. things to get away from you. Yes. Demons will challenge you. Yeah. You'll be scared. Oh, uh, angels are higher than me. Really? If you say angels are higher than you and you're saying the devil is higher than you because he's an angel. Yeah. That's right. He cannot be under your feet Amen. if you claim angels to be above you. He's an angel too. Mm -hmm. A family. Mm -hmm. All right, go to the next page. The process. You know, when you're dealing with uh, drug addiction, the first rule, now Pastor Vance has taught a lot of classes. The first rule in drug addiction is agree mm -hmm. that you have a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That's yes. what he said. Yeah. If you don't agree that you have a problem, yeah. it's a non-start. Right. Mm -hmm. Agree that 
I'm here because I'm a problem. Yeah. You know, running the, the dragon alcohol, I've had people that will come and talk about their mothers or their fathers and da 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 da. Then I'll say to them, like, you know what? What if you get your daddy here? Why don't you sign your daddy up? Since that's all you've been talking about. Or a parent will call and they'll tell me, you know, he doesn't really have a problem. Okay. Um, you called me to tell me that he doesn't have, oh, okay, well, that's good. Well, did you call me to tell me a testimony or do you want me to help your son? Amen. When they deny that there is a problem, you hinder yes, progress. Yes, yes. Here's what, what else you hinder. You hinder the forgiveness of God. Yes. Yes. David said, yes. for I acknowledge right. that the sin is ever before me. Amen. David said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to the loving kindness, according to the tender message of your love. Yes. To you only have I sinned. You have to acknowledge to get the process done. I agree that you need it. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It says the righteous cry and the Lord hears them mm -hmm. and he delivers them out of their trouble. Yeah. If I can't sleep, there's things happening in my mind. Every time I try to pray, I sleep. Mm. <laughs> I know there's some weird thing happening. I'm not progressing. And then, oh, I don't need deliverance. Okay. More power to you. You don't, you have to come to an agreement that I need this for yes. it to work. That's right. Step of faith, go seek it. Mm -hmm. You go for it. You find people that be, believe biblically, that know what they are doing, or else you go to some people that will mess you up. That's yeah. right. Amen. Let me, let me tell you a process that really, I don't find scripture verses for it, but people do it. They take you in. Then they say to you, remember that time when your daddy hit you. Go back to that place. That is done in some deliverance. Mm -hmm. I have not found a scripture support of that. No. And then they cause people to just go back. Yes. Yeah. Because when you say that, you close your eyes, sometimes you can even see yourself as a young child yes. in there. Yeah. The, the, the difference is someone. It's not even the Holy Ghost. Somebody has made you do that, which is witchcraft, which is projection. Yes. 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 You can become more demonized yep. by that. Yep. Let's sit here and let's cause you to go back. Why? Yeah. <laughs> that process? Oh, uh, I heard this and that. Really? Multiple personalities. We need to get each person saved in one person. <laughs> These are processes that are there. Okay. This person, I don't want to give an example to anybody. This George, something here. Sometimes he feels he's a Mary. Sometimes he feels he's this. Sometimes he feels, okay, let's get Mary saved. Who is Mary? <laughs> These are processes that are happening today in different groups. We get each person saved. There's only one person in that person. The other persons are demons. They cannot get born again. Amen. So that process, show me a scripture where Jesus had to get... The, the, two, the guy that had 2,000 demons, mm. let's say Jesus had to say, oh, come here, honey, come here, sit down. Let's get the 2,000 devils saved first of all before. Mm. Mm. So it's very important that you follow a process that is biblically yes. sound. That's why I tell the, our team that 
Everything you do in deliverance must have a scripture. I don't care what it is. It must have a scripture backing. You must be able to point at the scripture. We have a soul diagnosis. Right now we are doing, we are, we are revealing it. We are putting scriptures on almost every line. Because we want to be biblically sound in yes. everything we Amen. do. Amen. And uh, prophet, prophet, prophetess Rita is doing it. Amen. Follow the biblical instruction of the minister. Trust that person is standing before you. I don't care whether you care, you had PhDs from Rema. Mm -hmm. The reason why you are there is obviously those PhDs are not able to deliver you. It's obvious. If that person has been born again for two years and they are there to help you, yield to them right. and let That's them help. Right. Don't stand there cocky and go. That's right. Pride. Right. 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 You just double your demons after you leave that. Yeah. <laughs> One frustrating thing is people that think they know. You are doing it. You are teaching them the deliverance. You are getting them into a process. They talk a lot. They have a lot to say. Because they know a lot. And then at times, you don't even know who's there for deliverance, whether it's me or them. <laughs> because they talk so much, you forget, like, uh, did, I, did I come to you or you came to me? Which? which? You know, I had a lady, uh, the, the, this lady that was helping us, Carol. Carol Eji, oh, we love her. She is straight up. I'm a pastor. I have to be nice. Carol Edgy says, I tell her, uh, you are the one with demons. He doesn't. Shut up. Let him talk. <laughs> and the lady like, uh, so I looked at Carol. <laughs> straight to it. Like, yes. she did not say, do you, you know, you think you can be quiet? No, 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 no. She just said, I listen. You are the one with demons. Let him talk. <laughs> and the lady like, ah, oh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes you need a Peter yeah, in your right. eyes. Yeah, a Peter yeah. cut somebody's ear, and yeah. then you come and put it back. And then you have that. You go to Peter and say, yeah. you have to go Peter. <laughs> Since I'm being nice, I'll put it back. <laughs> <laughs> but the ears already cut. <laughs> now you think Marcus? I mean, you think they are the guy is here was Marcus? You think he did anything after that? After his ear was chopped off, <laughs> and then they put it back. I'm sure, like you know what? <laughs> I'm, 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 I don't want anything of mine to be chopped off. Next to it to be a, a hand, and he may not put it back. <laughs> In deliverance, you need people like that. Yes. That will cut off the ear, so and then you just put it back like that. <laughs> because some people, it's not even them, it's demons that are delaying their deliverance, that they are talking. Yeah. Arguing. Telling you things that supposedly they learned. Things that they think is not correct. Well, why come here? Hallelujah. All right, Second King 5. That's in your notes. Somebody read that out loud, then we'll know. I'll teach you a little bit on that. Trust the process is where we are. Somebody read out that read that out loud. Anyway, one person. So Naaman came with his horses, with his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Okay. Process. So, Naaman had leprosy. Mm -hmm. In a deliverance, Elisha sent a servant. Mm -hmm. Naaman was like Secretary of State, Secretary of Treasury. Now, imagine 
The city of treasury is in Louisville, and Pastor Bob, instead of him going there, he sends some lower person, maybe like me, and and Neman wanted to see Pastor Bob. Yeah. <laughs> you know why I tell you that? I get calls every time for deliverance, and people will say, "We want Pastor Bob to do it." Okay. Right. I said, "Okay, I'll give you his number." Nine six nine six four three three zero four. Oh, okay. And they call nine six four three three zero four. Guess what that, that number is? Find your number. That's his phone number. Yeah, yeah. 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 Guess what they end up? Back to me. Back to me. Yeah. Yeah. So Naaman did not want Elisha seven to go. Then when he was given the process, in deliverance you are given a process. Yes. Go and fast two days. Yeah. Go and do this. Naaman was given the process. The process is go and wash in River Jordan. Go and dip yourself seven times. Not six, not eight. Go and dip yourself seven times. Why? That was the instruction. There is no why. No why. That's right. No why. So, in deliverance, there may be instructions. And the instruction may be, when you go home, don't be on the phone. After deliverance, go home and stay to yourself. Now, I'm not saying I'm giving instructions. I'm just giving you examples. When a minister says that, don't go out and yeah, who she thinks she is. <laughs> Girl, the first thing you do, you are calling your friend. Before you know it, you are gossiping. Before yeah. you know it, you are backbiting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The minister gave you instructions, don't be on the phone. When you go home, be by yourself. Spend some time in prayer. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. do this. Don't see it as somebody trying to run your life. Right. Mm -hmm. See it as an instruction yes. from the spirit. Mm -hmm. I just obey. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. you, you want to die if yes. you not, you know, if you don't do that the day they tell you not to do it? Mm -hmm. So Naaman was given instructions. Go and dip yourself. But when you read further, Naaman was upset. Mm -hmm. Because he thought. He knew what to do. I thought he would come and wave his finger on his hand over me. And then the leprosy will go. Mm -hmm. Well, if you knew what to do, why did you do it yourself? <laughs> so there, there is a process in deliverance. Yes. And the process may be, don't eat. Yes. It's a process. Now, I'm not saying you become so, uh, what's the word? Like rules and regulations about it. No. What's the word? Legalistic, yes. Yeah. yes. You don't become legalistic. But if a minister says, these are the instructions, you live by yourself, yes. Okay, when you go home today, go put on worship music, stay to yourself, don't call anybody, sleep well. That is clear instruction. Yes. Don't disobey it. Oh, don't get upset. Oh, who do you think he is? I'm anointed too. Go get, get the devil out yourself then. That's right. Yeah. Instructions. Go. Now, look at what he said in verse 11. Read verse 11. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought. He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place. You know, we the get Lord. we get so much into methods. Yes. Yes. If I if somebody comes and says, in the name of just go, you are healed. Amen. You don't lay hands on them. They get upset. Oh. I thought you would lay hands on me. Mm -hmm. So, you take away your healing yes. by your attitude. Yes. Mm -hmm. You hear what I said? Yes, yes. your attitude. Yeah. You take away your healing 
Because what healed you is not the hand. What wow. healed you is the word of the Lord that Amen. came out. Amen. You are healed in Jesus' name, God. Yes. Amen. That's right. Amen. Oh, oh, I want him to lay hands on me. And the man leaves. Anger yep. rises up. Yes. Yes, he does. upset. Because Rebellion. he did not lay hands on you. That's right. That's horrible. Or, you know, others will be prayed for. And then they'll go to the next person and tell the next person the same thing that was prayed for by the other That's person. right. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Why do we do that? Yeah. I don't know. Which means the God that just healed me over here is not powerful enough. Now, there are times when you have multiple people laying hands on you. I'm not saying that is not right. But I'm talking about when you present your prayer to somebody. Yeah. They pray for you. And there's nothing in you that registers that you are healed. Then you go to somebody else. You know, look, prayer is prayer. Yes. There are times, there are times, there are times when pastor will call for people to be prayed. And I've seen it. You know, before I would see, because people trust, trust us in terms of prayer. I've never really seen people sitting down waiting for somebody to be <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to schedule this. Yeah. <laughs> if he leaves, and now you see a line with Pastor Bob, you see people waiting to be prayed for, and then your brother means that you're standing by because they don't think they can do the job. Yeah. Once you get that attitude, mm -hmm. now, if you know something about somebody that you're not comfortable about, yeah, don't go to them. I agree with that principle. But there must be faith. Yes. Nehemiah got upset. Yeah. Then look, look, let's let's see what else she's what he what he said. Are not Abana and Farfar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? Yeah. You know what he was saying? Oh. Why do, let's say I, I just by the spirit I say, you know what? I see you, if you go to Indiana, the Lord will heal you. If you go for this meeting in Indiana, the Lord will heal you. Then you're like, well, that meeting right here. <laughs> Why can't I get you right here? No. The instruction is, drive to Indiana, and the Lord will meet you there. <laughs> go to Jordan. Jordan was further than these rivers. Jordan was not as clean as these rivers. You go to Indiana, you find this little church. I'm like, oh no. I gotta get healed in that church. I like chandeliers. <laughs> <laughs> huh? They don't even have air in that little church. Guess what? Those were the instructions. Yeah. How much do you want it? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Rick, Rick yeah. So he turned and went away in a rage. His servant came near and spoke unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do something great, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather than when he said to thee, Wash and be clean? The instruction was so simple. If Neman was told to give $10,000, he would have done it. But there are certain things that we think is below us. Yes, yes that's right. That's true. Below me. Yeah. Yeah. Nehman was told to go wash. It yes, only yes. took, demanded his time. Yeah. Go and wash, you'll be delivered of your leprosy. Mm -hmm. Go and wash seven times. Now, you may have stumped all the way, <laughs> but guess what? You are going. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You are going anyway. Yeah. <laughs> And he dipped himself seven times. Read first. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Look, there's sometimes, there, I, I, now what I'm about to say, there are some preachers that.
Sometimes a preacher will even give you a number to give you, mm-hmm. a prophetic number to give. Like, oh, you know what? I hear this number. Yeah. You give it. You give it. There is a number that has been given. I used to see a pro- I used to see three, 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 three. Mm-hmm. And That's I became. Huh? That's yeah. I used to do three, three, three. I would, there would be a car in front of me, the license plate was 333. Mm-hmm. I would wake up at 333. Mm-hmm. I was at a hotel, and my hotel room number was 333. Mm-hmm. So I became spiritual, and I said, you know what? Yeah, maybe the Lord wants me to give 333. So I started giving $33.03. That was not what I was seeing. <laughs> 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 Put in my credit card, it was an auto payment every week. Every three, every month, three, 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 three dollars and three cents will come out of my account. <laughs> then I, I gave it one time. I said, no, that's not what I saw. I gave, I started giving, three hundred and thirty dollars a month. I just forget. It. Mm-hmm. Not too long. I had an increase. If you divide it by twelve, my increase then was three thousand three hundred thirty-three. Amen. Wow. No, no, whatever it was, the, the 333 was the 10%. The 333 was the 10%. Mm-hmm. So, there are instructions. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the yearly yeah, increase was $40,000. $40, that was the yearly increase, $40,000. Mm-hmm. If you divide 40000 divide by 12, what do you get? Mm-hmm. $3,300. 3, oh, okay. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. 40000 by by 12. Mm-hmm. 3300 So, 10 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> Alright. So, he, he, he got healed. Amen. He got healed. Why? Because he obeyed. Yes. <clears throat> Dealing with instruments. You will probably have to give me 10 more minutes if I can finish this. Romans 6 verse 13. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness. So, two instruments are mentioned there. One, there's an instrument of righteousness. Two, there's an instrument of righteousness. One is right, one is unright. Instruments. Hallelujah. Genesis 49, but there's five. It's in your notes. Simon and Levi, our brethren, instruments of cruelty is in their habitation. So, in Levi and Simon, there was instruments in them that uh, was anger, cruelty was in their habitation, was in their blood. All right? Now, go to Exodus. Somebody go to Exodus 2, real quick. Exodus 2. In fact, let's start with Exodus. Go to Genesis 49. 49.5. 49.5. Somebody read that out loud. Genesis 49.5. Okay, good. Please. You have to move. Levi are brothers. Weapons of violence are their swords. Okay. Let somebody read in King James. Simon and Levi are brothers. Instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place. Instruments of cruelty are in what? Their dwelling place. Their house. Or in their habitation. Read verse 6. O my soul, come not thou unto their secret, until their, unto their assembly mine honor. Be not thou united, for in their anger they slew men, and in their cell will they dig down a wall. They slew a man in anger. Now, read verse 1 of the same chapter. Read verse 1. The man, the father called his kids to start blessing them. And Jacob, this one. and Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall be befall you in the last day. So the father called his kids that come here, I want to show you, I want to bless you. Then in verse 5 he says, 
Simeon.